2014, September the 8th, I flipped one of my bikes. They call it high side and it threw me off of it. Didn't have my helmet on. I hit a rock and it tore this portion of my skull off. And, you know, the coma, long time rehabilitation and all that. But I wanted to make this video because this is March. It's Brain Injury Awareness Month. And, but not, you know, partly so that the people who follow the channel can kind of get to know me better and, you know, know my history. But also mainly for to give hope with my story and my story of my recovery to survivors who are going through this right now and their families and loved ones. Now, it's true. I, I got brain damage and I'm sure some of the people who have left hate comments on some of the other videos probably thought that to start off with. Now it's confirmed. But let's go ahead. Let's get out to the scene of the crime and I'll tell you the story is Highway 124 right here in Jerusalem and as you can see it what looks like the end of the road that little hill that actually right over that hill is a 90 degree turn I had just come out of the National Forest rode seven miles down a gravel road crooked and steep didn't have no issues went a half mile on this asphalt and almost died I guess you can kind of say I'm you know here in Jerusalem I was reborn I came over that hill right there that y'all just saw, and you can tell that on the other side of the hill, you can't see anything in the curve. When I came over the hill, I saw there were deer in the road, and so I shot for this part of the asphalt, hoping that I'd have enough time to stop. But at, when the rear wheel broke loose, it came around and I, I messed up. I let off the, the brake, and I passed that witching zone where it'll straighten back out or it'll grab and it flips the bike and that's what happened, it flipped the bike, threw me off the bike. And a rock just like that is what I landed on, you know, on my head and it tore this part of the skull and it was laying on the side of my neck and that's what the doctors and the EMTs told me later. But I do remember, I, I remember hearing this boot hit the ground and it's got scars on it from the asphalt right here. And I sat up, you know, I knew I'd taken a blow to the head, you know how it is when you get punched or whatever, everything goes white and, for a second you hear all that crackling and I felt something wet on my neck and I reached up and I touched it and when I looked at my hand I knew I was in I was as jacked up as a soup sandwich I, I mean I was in bad shape and so I crawled towards this house it's vacant of course it was even vacant at the time and uh, I didn't know it and I laid down right there close to it I got tired and luckily within about 40 minutes after it happened and I'm going by when the EMTs report say they got here and what time my buddy said I left it out that you know I'm sitting there with an open head wound bleeding all over there's as much of my blood in this ground right here for it to be a relation to me and the EMTs got here and they were able to get in there and when they were trying to get me on the stretcher I was resisting them, you know, trying to fight back, but I didn't know what was going on. Months later, I talked to some of the EMTs that were here and apologized to them. And they said, man, don't sweat it. It, it happens a lot. This is the field where they landed the helicopter, which is, you know, like a quarter mile from where the scene was. And they got me out. Of, I remember being everything at the scene and I remember being brought here and taken out of the ambulance. But I think that's when I went into the coma before they put me on the helicopter because I don't remember being on the helicopter at all. The insurance company paid $30,000 for me to have a helicopter ride and I can't even tell you what it's like riding a helicopter. I, I can tell you, it's real hard to look cool when you're shitting on yourself in the intensive care unit. You know, and I was in a coma for two weeks before I was able to get out. We're here in Washington right now with the brain in, or the American Brain Injury Association. We're going to talk to Congress about making sure that the 2008 TBI Act stays in effect for funding for research for rehabilitation of traumatic brain injury. So we'll take a look at the monument and then I'll tell you the story about my recovery. 
Two weeks in a coma, and about two more weeks in rehabilitation at, at Big Baptist there in Little Rock, and a year of rehabilitation, outpatient, all because I made a stupid ass decision and walked right past my helmet. There was, I think it cost me $500 to fix my bike, and it was $350,000 for the doctors that to fix me and it could have been avoided if I'd have had my helmet on I would have stood my bike up and rode it home a little old dent in the gas tank the next morning after I woke up with Dr. Nazar Qureshi the surgeon who saved my life he was doing his rounds and he came to my room you know he's checking on all the patients and stuff when he opened the door he looked at me and he said, you know, you're supposed to be dead. I said, I said, I'm glad I'm not. He said, you're either death proof or good Lord has a perfect for you. I don't know, but that's where the death proof thing comes from. I got that tattoo on my forearm when I started riding again, which was about nine months into my rehabilitation, eight months, something like that. And I put it on my right forearm because that's my throttle arm. And it's to tell me that I'm not death proof and that I'm just really damn lucky, but the logo is my skull torn open and the pistons upside down is me flipping the bike. You know, I mean, that's, now y'all know where it came from. It didn't come from YouTube. It was on my arm for eight years before the YouTube thing even started. So that explains the logo, but let's go back to the coma for a few minutes. And I'd like to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart is that on 9-11, 2014, which was a few days after I got to the hospital, I flatlined and they had to rush me back into surgery and reevacuate some pressure off my brain and of course resuscitate me. But the same day, that very same day, my youngest son was being born. So for whatever reason, I came back to life and I was able to recover from my injuries the best that I was able to. I still have issues. But if I hadn't, I would have just been a picture on the wall. He would have never known his father. Just heard stories about, about, you know. But after I came out of the coma, you know, I had to learn how to walk again without assistance. And, you know, I had to learn how to do a lot of stuff over again. But one, one thing was a blessing, and it's kind of funny how the brain works. But two, you know, the great passions of my life are working on stuff and riding bikes, which if y'all follow the channel, y'all know that's what I do, I and mean, that's me. And, and I didn't lose any of my mechanical knowledge, and I didn't lose the ability to use my hands. And if I hadn't had those, I, life would be really not near as fun as it is now. So these were the stairs that I would crawl up, because you gotta keep in mind, I, I wasn't completely where I couldn't walk, but people had to hold my belt. My balance was really compromised because of the damage to the vestibular and uh, the nerve from the fracture in this side of the ear or the ear canal. I mean, this right here, this is where it all took place because I would, like I said, I was just determined to get as close to who I was before the accident as I could. And I would literally come in here. I had to do all my, 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 my sons, my oldest who would come up and help hand some of the weights to me when they were too heavy for me to move them to the bench. I did 90% of the work sitting on the bench with it up. And I would wear a helmet like when I was doing overhead presses. I'd wear a helmet to make sure that if I lost stability, I would smack myself on that wire mesh or titanium mesh. My oldest two boys, they got this for me, you know, right after the accident. And 
you know, uh, what Rocky said. Um, I think it was Rocky Five, anyway. And but going in one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. And it really that means a lot to me because I had to just keep thinking about that over and over again as I was trying to uh, recover as best as I could. That's a gas tank right there. A little old bitty dent on it, and that was the bulk of the damage that was done to the bike. $500 to fix it. You know, obviously I did the work, but $500 in part. $350,000 to fix me. It took all the king's horses and all the king's men to put old Dave back together again. And I ain't completely back together. I don't believe anybody who suffers a, a severe traumatic brain injury is going to come back 100%. This is something I want to let survivors know. You probably need to go ahead and realize that you're going to lose a little. No matter how good you recover, you have to accept the fact that you turn 80 overnight. And But it... Uh, you know, one of the best tips that I can give is to find something to keep you distracted. You know, if you didn't have hobbies beforehand or interest, find some. You know, come up with something that can keep you from focusing on the things that you've lost. I mean, you kind of, you have to do it like this. You have to take, okay, put all these things on the table and say, this is all the stuff I enjoyed to do. This is all the stuff that I was capable of doing. And you just got to figure out, okay, which ones can I not do? And look at it from the positive side, but I still can do these right here. Even if it's only 50% of the things you enjoyed doing before. Remember, it's not about enjoying life more or less. It's about enjoying life through a different lens. Now, the deficits that I have to deal with, I'll go ahead and tell y'all. Number one, I deal with temporal lobe epilepsy, which, research it if you want to know what it is because it's complex. I have, I'm deaf in one ear, and so I'm, it's loud ringing constantly and so that's another thing listening to music and working on stuff keeps me distracted so that I don't focus on the because sometimes it's painful I'm not gonna lie but I'm gonna tell you and this is where the YouTube thing comes in I'll tell you that my worst deficit is the damage to my memory I have a difficult time forming new memories so in other words, when I go to sleep at night, I'm going to lose two, three, four, five hours. You never know. I may meet you on the street and have a conversation. And next time I see you, I won't know who you are. And, but with, now this is the tip number two. And that's going to be, if you have things you've lost, try to figure out some kind of crutch, some kind of band-aid. Something that can help you at least do what you lost to a degree. Now, the YouTube thing, well, that's my memory. See, I still love working on bikes and guns, and but at the same time, you know, these, th these things are precision machines, and if I can't get it all completed in one day, the next day or a week later or whenever it is, I may not remember if I did this super critical step and I have to before YouTube I had to just trust from my years of experience that I did it and so you know and it, so far it worked out but the YouTube I video everything that I'm doing and upload it and then I'm able to go back and reference it myself and I'm gonna tell you I've done it a lot and to verify because it puts my mind at ease before I hit that starter button or I pull the trigger on that gun, that you know everything's going to be okay. Now, right here, you see uh, these are the shirts. This is a fundraiser we're going to do. It's on our YouTube, excuse me, our webpage, DeathProofProductions.com, and it's going to be shirts with a traumatic brain injury ribbon 
and then on the front it's going to have our logo but in brain injury green. All the funds, the proceeds are going to be donated to Miracles for Mary and they're a nonprofit organization and they don't just take the money to, to raise awareness, they, they help survivors with financial setbacks like you know help them be able to build wheelchair ramps or modification to the vehicle so that they can get in and out of the vehicle safely things of that nature which is critically needed so if you don't mind and you got a little spare cash pick you up one of these shirts so we can help these folks out and i'm gonna end it here i hope you'll watch the rest of my videos i'll see you all in the next one